think the plow went by. It felt like the whole car went down a cliff for a second. Oh shit, my window's broken. Did you roll your window down? Oh, I'm not, it's shattered. The plow came by with so much force that it shattered this window. You might be able to see. There's, they think they possibly dented the front of the car and neither door will open at all, but this window was able to open enough to talk to the guy. Well, it was only able to open because he cleared the window off. Yeah. So we kind of don't know what the situation is out there, but we'll get out there as soon as we can. And as far as we can tell, it snowed a, a ton. So I can definitely tell that well, this tire was completely knocked sideways. The whole car was turned. See, the whole car used to be this way, now it's this way. That side is dented like crazy from all this snow. But I'm gonna start digging just to at least access this side as best as possible. And just hopefully the car is still functional, but it is really dented. All right, let's start. Digging out through this door. Aha! Alright, so. I'm gonna grab the shovel that's under the roof rack. Because that'll be a much easier shovel to dig out with. Look at this mess. That's where you can tell how dented this is. And this is just chunks of ice I'm walking on that he plowed onto us. Definitely, no question. Both doors are gonna have to be replaced. Second one's even worse because it's hit so hard. It's like an inch or two off the actual frame of the car. It's not even closed. Maybe turning into a nightmare. Just hoping Chad will survive. So after digging most of this out, you can see that on well, this tire, I don't know if it's punctured or if it's knocked off the rim, but it's definitely flat. So I don't know if I'll be able to pull this out of here. Maybe, let's even assuming the car will start. In this trench here, I still have a lot of digging to get the tailpipes out. And this is what totally shattered and wrecked. It's at least gonna take uh, quite a bit of Part replacement and body work to get this car to get the Chad back how he once was. Well, also, that. And then at least we're getting somewhere. Most people show up and leave and their doors are still attached to their car. Well, your doors are attached. Well, we don't know that for sure. That's fair. And from there, we, we waited. We waited for eight, nine, ten hours before a tow truck could finally get us down. It wasn't until it was dark, that's for sure. No one ever came by to help dig us out. No one helped get us down the mountain. The, the resort wanted nothing to do with us. After after that accident, they, they pretended like we weren't even there. 
but it was sad to see to see Chad in that state. I knew he was I knew he was done for. I knew he was totaled. Even just from the sound of that accident, it was pretty clear that it was time for a new chapter. I first started that conversion back in the summer of 2018. My first trip from home was out to uh, Guadalupe Mountains and uh, White Sands in southern New Mexico. I remember the first night I ever spent out there in the back of Chad. It was... The first night wasn't so good. I woke up real early and there were a lot of thunderstorms. But the second night was when I woke up and realized, I can do this. I can do this forever. This was... <laughs> It was a lot of fun, and it was perfect weather, and I kind of miss that feeling of a <laughs> of a real spontaneous adventure, especially now that I haven't been able to drive around for a while. But from there, it was just adventure after adventure after adventure. My first long trip, I set out straight towards Grand Teton and beyond. I ended up driving all the way to Alaska, and then driving all the way back down. I went all over the western United States. Ended up going in Chad's lifetime to Alaska another another three times. Unbelievable where that car took me. I'll have a map. I'll make a map so you can see all the roads that Chad has been down, which as far as I'm concerned is pretty much every highway in the western United States. Just about every national park out there and every national forest, scenic area, national monument that I'd ever come across. It's amazing how much you can personify a car like that. And I hadn't called it Chad until I met up with Rosa, which was at the beginning of 2020, right before the pandemic. We met up in a small town in southern Utah. And I think she took one look at Chad and she saw where it said flex in the front. And she thought, your car is a chat. Your car is a stereotype of a chat. And I was like, yeah, you know what it is. And now I can't even imagine not calling him Chad. And I mean, of course, I was already super close with my car, but that just made it that small amount more where it starts to become a friend and then a family member and then, you know, someone you rely on. So seeing him go is, is it's something I knew was coming, but I didn't expect it so soon. Chad had 260,000 miles. I put almost all of those on Chad in a, in a brief few years, just about three. Rosa and I both knew that the next car we'd get would be a van. Obviously, we saw that happening in a few years. Um, but with all this, we kind of told ourselves that maybe, maybe it's not just a sign, but it's our, our time to to get ourselves a van and just jump in and get started and do a whole conversion, which I obviously we weren't expecting this summer. We had all kinds of videos planned and we do still have Rosa's car, which will be taken out for a few days. But now it's time for the, the newest chapter of our lives with this Ford Transit, brand new extended tall roof. It's the biggest van you can pretty much get. And so you can expect starting in early June, a full-blown conversion series. Of course, I know it's not what most of you are subscribed for, but we'll still have plenty of our original content coming. And then from the van, tons, tons more. The possibilities, this opens up. How much longer we can spend on the road without having to resupply and restock because we'll have so much room for storage and, and fridge and freezer. and It's, it's fun to dream. There's, there's going to be a lot of possibilities. But I'm really hoping that this van can carry on his legacy. <laughs> we haven't come up with a name. If any of you have any suggestions, you saw the picture on our community page, and I'll show some video here. Um, but it's a big, beautiful white van, so whatever, uh, whatever name comes to mind, maybe we'll be able to adopt, because, of course, we need to give the new van a name. Well, hopefully, when we finally get back at it with the whole new conversion, We'll have tons and tons of videos to bring you guys. I might even be starting my own channel, uh, something I'm more interested in about geography and quirks like that, and maybe a few survival videos that I could be starting at the end of this summer. That's always been a big dream of mine. This Tale of Two Travelers channel was just something Rosa and I thought, hey, we go on all these trips. I'm sure 
uh, some people would like for us to share it with them. And so we decided to do it. And I guess it's been a success so far. A lot of you watch and enjoy our stuff. And we're so thankful for all of you because really being able to share these adventures is something we always wanted to do, whether it was on Instagram or TikTok or something. But YouTube was really the place for us. And we're still getting the uh, getting to know getting to know the algorithms, getting to know the platform. It's a lot more complicated than something like Instagram. But we love it. And hopefully it can be our careers for the rest of our lives. I mean, that's what I know that's what I want to do. And then maybe, of course, convert some vans, build some cabins. That's also in store for the uh, more distant future. We're more hopeful now. Now that we really know what we're going to do, and now that we have this beautiful new vehicle to carry on Chad's legacy, the future is good, I think. At least I hope so. But I wanted to dedicate the last portion of this video to a tribute to, of course, my favorite car of all time, and honestly, my best friend, Chad. I'm a traveling spirit, I've seen many shores From the West Pacific to the island of Kenya They treat me like a son anywhere I go And even though no one can tell, I still feel that I'm Stranded, I know how to handle it on my own On my own I have learned that no one else can carry this load It's a train where I'm the only passenger on board Oh, there is beauty to enjoy on this road But even so, I still feel that I Stranded, I know how to handle it all 